Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the WL Toys A333 Victorious two-wheel drive off-road truck. Now, it does not really have like a specific name because it goes by this and various you know, wild racing up here on the box. I'm going to move the truck here for a minute because this box is so huge I'm not going to get it in front of the camera otherwise. But there are um, boxes coming in a little bit, but there are um, three other buggies or trucks and buggies that come with this. The uh, 303, 313, 323, and then when I got here, the 333. And the uh, reason why I'm pointing that out is I think they may use this box for all of these. I'm not exactly sure because it says on the front here, put the box back around, that it uh, is uh, waterproof over here. I don't know if that'll show up or not. But I don't, this truck is not waterproof. Um, it is, the electronic speed control in it is uh, visible on the uh, upper of the body right here. If I get this closer, it might show up. I think, I think it's an ESC and a receiver combo all in one. I'm not 100% sure. It labeled it as a receiver, but I'm pretty sure that's an ESC also. And that's exposed. So obviously if water gets up in there, it's going to ruin the electronic speed control. And that's why the instruction manual says not to uh, drive it through water or in rain. But I think you have no problem driving it through a little light rain or some small puddles or even an inch or two of snow. It's not going to be a problem, but it isn't waterproof. I just wanted to point that out. So, you know, it does say that on the box. And it does show, of course, show some of the other accessories. Uh, uh, some of the other features, you know, it has a differential gears. You can see when you turn it, the wheels spin the opposite direction on either side. So that's a differential. It comes with a full set of ball bearings. Uh, 390, they call it size brush motor. I always thought those were 380 size, but still, it's a little smaller. Not as big as a 540. And, you know, it has full... Um, so it's hydraulic shocks. Um, I, in the diagram, and now it does not show up in oil. I don't. I don't know if these shocks are oil filled or not. They are. They do. They do work pretty good. Um, I don't uh, think they are oil filled though. Um, but um, that's kind of what I was used to in the kit cars. But these shocks seem so good anymore. I don't know if it really makes that big of a difference. So uh, it also says here on the box it's 35 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 20 miles per hour. And uh, I'd say the truck probably does. 15 to 20. I'm just guessing. I have no uh, way of uh, testing this speed, but I don't think it is. Uh, I don't know if it's 20, but it's still a pretty quick truck for a you know a 380, 390, whatever you call it, sized uh, a brushed motor. Um, it comes with besides the full ball bearings. It does have uh, metal dog bones here for the drive shafts um, in the rear because it's two wheel drive, and I really like that. I mean, you you know, back in the day. It wasn't uncommon to have plastic dog bones in some of these cars. And this thing, I think, is running between $60 and $70. So to get all these features and including a full set of ball bearings, that's impressive because the ball bearings will help your run time and, of course, they'll make it faster. So just really, really nice features. I think it's a beautiful truck. It's just gorgeous with this, you know, um, I think it's a Lexan, they call it. I forget. The, it's been so long since I've worked on the kit cars. Um, for this top body, you know, and the, you know, the, the cotter pin body clips here that go on to hold it in place. Um, but you don't need to access the underside of the body too much um, unless you need to do some sort of repairs. Um, it comes with a uh, 6.4 volt, 1000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. So it's not a LiPo, but lithium ions are close. It's still a lot more powerful than the nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydrate type batteries they used to use. And now this gives a pretty decent run time of about 10 minutes, maybe even a little more. The instruction manual advertises at 10 minutes. I was getting around that, um, if not a little bit more. In my run test, I don't take it quite that far because I didn't have a chance to, uh, the battery wasn't completely charged, so I wanted to stop the, uh, the run uh, test uh, a little early before it went dead. Uh, let's see here. Um, Let's go ahead and go over the controller. It's a standard pistol grip controller. It's pretty comfortable on the hands. Um, it takes four AA batteries. It doesn't come with a built-in uh, rechargeable battery, but that's no biggie. It should last quite a while, four AA's. Uh, you just have the on and off switch here on the side. Um, it has some little mode button, which the instructions, which are not very good in their English to um, Chinese English translation, but it basically says it's inoperable. It's one, two, three, four. I don't know if this is like some sort of way that you could change channels or something on a 2.4 gigahertz, but 
Yeah, I think it has, I think it advertises at a hundred meter range. I've not pushed it out that far, but I believe it. It should be able to easily go that far, uh, especially if you're uh, uh, unobstructed. Um, it's got a foam grip here on the uh, on the steering, which I always like. Um, some of these cheap ones come with plastic. You know, it's cheap. The controllers come with plastic, which you know your hands can kind of, your fingers can kind of slide. But this is a nice grip, so I like that. And it's got throttle and uh, steering trim, so you can trim it up here, and you do a little steering trimming when you first get it. Uh, I didn't have to mess with the throttle. There shouldn't usually you don't have to. The ESCs are usually calibrated out of the factory, but uh, you know sometimes that can happen where you got to give a little bit of a reverse uh, thr throttle trim or something if it's still wanting to creep forward when it's an idle. Um, you know, there's your forward, and then pushing. Um, pulling back I should say for your throttle, pushing forward for your uh, reverse, you tap forward and that's your uh, brake, your electronic brake, which works pretty good. Um, I think that's pretty much all, there's not too much on the end to go over with the controller. Um, you know, just like I said, it's a really, really nice truck. Uh, the suspension works pretty good on it. It's a little bounce to the back. They do include with the spare parts some spacers that you can put above the springs and the top of the shocks. If you want to stiffen the shocks up a little bit more, but I think that's going to make it even a little bit bouncier. Um, I'd imagine you probably could even replace these shocks with an aftermarket oil filled or something like that if you wanted to, but they work so well, I don't see any reason why you'd want to. It comes with one of these uh, four way uh, wrenches. The largest one here I'm, will fit these uh, nuts on the wheels to take the wheels off, and of course, it's going to fit some of the other ones inside if you need to make any repairs. And it comes with an extra uh, pinion gear. Now usually these, lots of times these, these, sometimes these gears would be metal, but this is, uh, it feels like these are all nylon, so that's a good, not a super cheap gear, it's a good, in case you strip it, or it could be that this is a different size, they used to include with these kit cars, so I've been in RC, car and truck uh, hobby since the mid 80s, and I'm 45, so you know, you know, almost 30 years, and uh, I, you know, things have come so far with these, um, you know, so they're ready to run, they used to build the kit cars, but they used to include metal, you know, pinion gears, they might give you two different ones if you wanted to change uh, how fast it accelerates, but then top end was lower, so it's possible this has a different uh, um, gear count, um, tooth count here on the gears, the number, so I don't know, the instruction manual does not say that, but most likely it's just a replacement in case you should strip it out, because that can happen, you can strip a gear, um, though not as easy on these, because you get a break, you're not going to uh, be able to slam it in reverse and go forward because that's a great way to strip a gear. So with the electronic brake, it's not going to allow that, which so that, that's good. Um, trying to see if there's anything else here on the steering or the controller that I didn't go over. I think it pretty much did. Um, I don't think I touched on the charge time. The charger that comes with it here, now this has an EU plug. Um, I have an adapter to the US. If you order this, um, you'll get a uh, US adapter if you're in the US and you need that for the wall. So that's no big deal. And it, and it plugs into the battery here with the JST plugs. Um, if you have an aftermarket charger that can charge lithium ions because of this, um, you know, the different voltage in a LiPo, I'd recommend that because it's going to be able to do it quicker. But my IMAX clone charger I have does not have a lithium ion option. So the voltage on a LiPo is, you know, starts at 7.4, so it's, it's more than this one. So I couldn't use that even though I have a JST plug for it. So I got to use a wall adapter. Now, Instruction says three hours. The first time I charged it, the battery obviously had a lot of charge and it didn't take that long. But the second time, you know, it's probably between two and three hours. I don't think it's going to take you three hours. Of course, it depends on if you run it all the way down or not, too, obviously. So, let's look at my notes here make sure I didn't forget anything. I don't think so. I think that pretty much covers it all. There's not a whole lot to cover on these trucks. I just, I really like to, uh, these trucks, I've been in the hobby a long time, even though I'm really into the drones now, I still love my trucks and cars. One thing I guess I should cover real quick is the uh, on and off switch here is on the bottom. So easy to turn on and off and don't have to worry about just plugging the battery in the power up. And here's where the bay goes for the battery. You just pop this off and there's your uh, JST plug. You plug that in and it's real easy. You just put this into the little groove, pull the tabs back in, let go, and there it is. And it's super easy to change the battery. They snap into place. I would recommend unplugging a battery whenever you get done with it, especially if you're not going to run it for a while. You shouldn't leave the battery plugged into the and instructions say that. Well, one other thing is that it does have a breakdown or an exploded view, I guess you could say, kind of. 
of the car, which reminds me of the old Tamaya and different manuals when you assemble them. It's not that detailed, but it's not bad. Uh, and it it um, shows you how to make some repairs if you need to order any extra parts. So that part of the instruction manual is actually really good. Um, so if you need to make any repairs, it tells you how to put it all back together. There's a lot of, of pages of this. So I was impressed by that. I did not expect it to, uh, to have all this detail in there. Really, really nice. And I think on the back page here, it's got a, uh, all the extra parts or replacement parts, I should say, that you can order in case you bust something. Because you could definitely bust something. This truck is pretty darn durable. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy to bust. It's a, the plastic is made of a, some sort of a jet injected type, um, you know, um, rosin or some sort of an injected into the plastic. So it's not going to bust real easy. It's not that cheap ABS plastic like they used to use in some of them. So this is a rugged truck, pretty quick. I know it looks like a lot like a, like in a more expensive Traxxas or hobby grade uh, truck. It just doesn't use a brushless motor or a, a lipo, and it doesn't have this you know those super high end electronic components. But in terms of performance and the way that the truck runs, I can't really complain about that. I mean, the only negative I can think of is occasionally when I've been driving this thing, um, I've lost bind. Now it's not been in the middle of moving down the road. It's like it's standing, you know, having to stand still and then doing the the uh, wheels back and forth a bunch of times and all of a sudden it just stops and it loses bind. I don't know what would do that. It's, I'm not giving it throttle. But you're not going to sit there and go back and forth, back and forth a whole bunch. I was just doing it just test out the steering and see how the servo worked. But uh, right at the end of a run too I stopped and did a little bit like that I guess and then it, it lost bind. And it, she just turned the power off everything back on and away it goes. But it was just odd. I don't know what would do that. It must be a little bug. Or it could just be the one that I received, but it's not something that's affected um, my ability to play with it and stuff. So I would not say it's a huge concern. It's just something I feel I should point out. I don't sugarcoat my reviews, so um, if there's something wrong, I'm going to let you know. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that's the only thing, and it's not a frequent occurrence. It's happened to me um, three times, I think, uh, in the runs that I've put in since I got it. So not a big deal, but something you should be aware of. So. All right, now I think that wraps up everything, and just a few things that I had forgotten. So let's go ahead and we'll move along to the uh, run review. Welcome back for the uh, drive review of the uh, WL Toys A333 uh, Victorious truck, is the name it goes by. Really cool looking truck. Um, nice little pistol grip controller it comes with. I already got the truck bound here and it's ready to go. Um, big wheels, um, metal dog bone drive shafts and full ball bearings this is just a great truck pretty fast with a 380 or 390 they call it a um, brushed motor um, not a not a huge um, brushed motor but um, you know still pretty quick so let's go ahead and take it out now I got an action cam sitting down the, or the corner of the driveway there I'm hoping I can get some good action shots at a ground level with it here uh, so it's not so far away on my hat cam. So let's go ahead and take it out now One thing I want to warn is the last time I tried to do a review I did lose bind and a few times that's happened like if I sit there and steer a whole bunch and don't give it throttle It'll just lose bind and, and I have to turn it off and on and it happened at the end of my review And I thought the battery had gone dead. So I'm redoing everything now The battery is not fully charged uh, Fully charged. I was getting around 10 minutes so I'm not going to drive it that long because I know the battery, well I can't because the battery is not fully charged, but I wanted to redo this review. I was <laughs> pretty frustrated that I had a, uh, some mishaps because my action cam, uh, some reason it did not record the video. Uh, it must have been the cheap memory card I stuck in it. Anyway, I'm venting, so let's go ahead and get to the drive review here. The battery is pretty close to fully charged and the, and the speed is not going to be any difference. The full, it's going to be full speed. Uh, here even though the battery is not fully charged that is it uh, max speed there and that's pretty quick not super fast but like I said for that 380 or they call it a 390 brushed motor um, that's pretty quick I believe the RPMs listed in the instructions is 16,000 RPM um, you, know, you know I'm used to these brushed motors I grew up with the Tamiya kit cars and such and there's the electronic braking and uh, most of them came with 540 brushed ones. So this is a little slower than that, but uh, it's still pretty quick for what you're getting for between 60 and $70. You're getting a uh, 
pretty uh, fast car. You know, full ball bearings is something that was more of a luxury when I was younger. I'm 45, and uh, we did not have full ball bearings unless you, in most kits, unless you bought them extra. Um, and that helps. With the, that'll help with the speed. You see, it really flies. It goes through the grass, no problem. And it helps with the uh, uh, run time. Le much, le much less friction. Now this is. This is rated at 35 kilometers per hour, um, which, which equates to roughly 20 miles per hour if you go by miles per hour. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't have any, you know, any way of uh, testing the speed, but uh, I would say it's probably closer to you know 15 to 20. I don't know if it quite goes 20, but it is still a fast truck for the price. The suspension seems to work really well. I like the big wheels and the rubber tires. They have a lot of grip, so you have a lot of traction. I'll try to get some shots here in front of my action cam. It's recording now. Hopefully it works this time. Let's slam on the brakes. You just push the controller for the little the uh, throttle stick forward, and that's your electronic brake. You hold it, and then there's a delay, and then it goes in reverse. That's how they all work so you don't slam it in reverse and rip your gears out. That's the way they used to use reverse um, on the old servo-driven speed controllers, which were junk back in the day. Very cool jump there. Let's do a few more of those. But I, really, I really like it, and it's a good price. <laughs> it handles well. The steering is servo. It has a servo in there. It's servo-driven. It's a little bit jerky whenever you have it sitting still, but it seems to work just fine when you, whenever you're driving. The servo works really smoothly. It could just be the servo needs a little, it could have used a, a servo with a little more torque, a high torque servo. But like I said, you know, 10 minutes run time with this with a fully charged uh, battery. It's a 6.4 volt lithium ion. So that really helps, you know, provide a good boost on that brushed motor and uh, the longer run times and the old nickel cadiums that I was used to back in the day um, did not run 10 minutes usually they, they might have um, but they weren't this fast seems like you just a higher discharge on these lithium ions and lipos pushes the brushed motors a little more than those old nickel cadiums could do back in the day Technology's really come a long way with these. No problems out here going through the uh, the dirt and the grass. So it handles great. Just a really cool truck. I said the, the plastic is a rugged. It's not a cheap ABS plastic like they used to use in the and the, and the kit cars and even the especially the ready to run cheapo ones back in the day it's like more like a maybe a rosin filled or a compound it's not a it's not a fiberglass it's a type of plastic but it is strong you're not going to break this thing very easily it does say in the box it's waterproof but i don't believe that it is waterproof there is there's Three different models besides this one. I think they all package in the same box. You know, they use the same boxing, uh, the same packaging. It could be that uh, that one of those other models is waterproof, so they just labeled it for all of them. Because the ESC in this, I don't think we're going to be able to see if I pick it up, but the ESC in this is up underneath the body here. There it is. And I think it's an ESC and a receiver combo all in one. It's kind of crooked in there right now. Um, it's just a way that the double-sided tape is holding it down, but it's securely in place. But um, if you submerge this in water, it's going to um, uh, ruin that ESC. It's going to blow that out. Now, it won't hurt the brushed motor, so I don't think you'd have any problem with this thing um, driving it through uh, damp conditions or very shallow puddles or a very light rain. But the instruction says not to drive it in the rain or through puddles because I'm sure they're worried about the ESC even though the box says waterproof. So it's definitely not waterproof. I also think it had no problem going through um, 
you know, inch or two of snow, especially a dry powdery snow, this thing would be a blast in that. So with winter coming on, this would make a great Christmas present for uh, anybody, especially who lives in a uh, cold climate where they're gonna get some snow. So I'm hoping to get this out whenever we get some snow and driving it too, and maybe I'll get a video of that also. Um, just a really neat truck, I like it a lot. Very, very well made truck. And uh, 60 to 70 dollars, you know, depending on whether it's on sale or not, you're not going to find too many vehicles, you're not going to go to your local uh, uh, Walmart or some store like that and find a truck that competes with this. There's just no way, not for this, not for this price. So it's definitely a winner in my book. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the drive there, and uh, stay tuned for more videos.